New Art, New Nature is an exhibition based on the Ulster Museum permanent collection of our post-war and contemporary paintings. And the idea behind it was really to showcase um, some new acquisitions that have just come into the collection, particularly work by William McKeown and also Willie Doherty. And so the idea was to look at um, how contemporary artists deal with nature. Nature was a driving force in the 18th, 19th century painting. But in the post-war period, in a sense, it's taken something of a backseat to many of the issues that artists deal with um, in contemporary life. So it was looking at how nature, um, in fact, is a very uh, important force in contemporary art. And the first work of the exhibition is Two Hangings by Matisse. And in a way, they set the theme for the rest of the exhibition. And Matisse talked about the irrepressibility of nature. And that's something that I hoped would come through in uh, the new acquisitions and contemporary work. The acquisition of, of Untitled, which is, um, has just come into the collection, was part of a very generous gift from the Art Fund, who um, supported the acquisition and gave us a very generous grant towards uh, bringing it into the collection. It was the first work that they had supported by William McKeown, and they're very impressed by the quality. McKeown was, in many ways, probably the most important abstract painter of his generation. He uh, grew up in County Tyrone on his um, family farm. He trained, first of all, in textiles and worked for um, a period of time as a weaver in residence at the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum. He then developed um, into a painter, but that early experience of weaving of the surfaces of um, warp and weft thread as you create uh, the surface of the linen um, had a very important effect on his development as a painter. And so his abstract painting is in many ways a coming together of this formation of surface, which grows out of his um, experience of weaving, but also his experience of nature when he was young on the family farm in Tyrone. And Many of the works are untitled, but some have names that come from that time, the lane, um, aspects or, or memories he had of, the, of his life on the farm. We were then given a gift uh, called Waiting for the Corn Crake, which is 30 watercolours on paper of the same year as untitled. And this was a gift from the William McKeown Foundation, which has been set up to uh, continue um, really raising awareness of McKeown's achievements as a painter. So that's on display with Untitled. And the title of that work, Waiting for the Corn Crake, goes right back to McKeown's early experiences uh, in County Tyrone on the farm. Because when he was young, corn crakes now are very small secret of birds, which have very harsh grating call. And they're now virtually extinct, except in very remote places. But when he was young on the farm, um, often, activities that were due to be begun in the spring or early summer wouldn't be started until they heard the first corn crake. So there's this sense of it being a herald in nature, having this role, quite a serious role, um, for farming activities. So McKeown's work is very closely bound in to his early experiences of nature. And that's made his attempt to paint in an abstract way um, develop resonances that go back to the 19th century, to the work of Caspar David Friedrich in particular, the great German romantic painter who would paint isolated figures against great lowering skies, sometimes on an isolated seashore, and so that the sky and the light becomes the most important part of the painting. And that's, in a way, what's happening in McKeown's work. It's about light, it's about response to nature, it's about being alone in nature. Um, waiting for the corn crake, the series of watercolours, um, 30 watercolours, are very similar. In fact, when you first look at the work, they seem almost to be identical, but there are subtle differences in all the works. And McKeown was also a very physical painter, so the activity of looking at the watercolours he hoped would be a physical activity. It's almost like breathing or contemplation. Um, it's in a sense almost becomes a spiritual activity. It's something that allows the viewer of the watercolors to, to directly 
experience, what McKeown was experiencing in terms of his response to nature. So they're very subtle works. They require you to give them time and space to perhaps spend minutes looking at them. It's almost um, like meditation or contemplation. It just requires you almost to empty your thoughts and respond to the works. And so when you look at them immediately, they seem blank, they seem empty. But the more you look at them, the more you consider and think about them. Um, they have a lightness and a resonance uh, that's very subtle and very delicate, but yet powerful. So it's a work that we really wanted to have in the collection. It fits in with the theme, new art, new nature. But also it fits with our collection of American um, post-expressionist um, color field painters, great works by Morris Lewis and Kenneth Nolan, these great American abstract paintings. So he fits into that tradition of simply response to abstraction, which can be a very subtle, can be a very spiritual experience. McCombe was a great technician. He cared very very much about building up the surface of his paintings. So they're made up of many, many layers of uh, oil paint which he would apply to get this wonderful depth. It's almost like looking at a cloud. It has this lovely um, simplicity, but yet depth. The surface itself is quite smooth and he always wanted the linen to somehow be present underneath. So whilst it's quite delicately painted, it is made up of, of many layers. It gives us this very subtle variance of color. Um, with McKeown also, um, there's always a sense of somehow nature being beyond the frame of the painting. And he did early uh, installations in the 1990s where he would have made a room with light outside and sometimes a high window as in a renaissance painting and a very warm light flooding into these spaces there's, there's often a sense of greater light greater beauty greater nature beyond the frame of the painting so there's almost a sense of them being like windows or high windows that you can't actually see through but you're aware of the light or the nature beyond so it it is very linked to the landscape it's linked to what's beyond but also it's physical. He wanted um, his, the proportions of his work, whether the smaller watercolors or the larger abstract painting, very much based on human proportions because he wanted looking at the paintings to be this, this very physical activity.